Hey guys, Mono here and welcome to the first episode of Monologues, a new, hopefully weekly video series where I'll be talking about video game related news. So game releases, upcoming games, industry news, industry drama, and all of that. Since this is the first episode, feel free to leave a comment down below detailing your thoughts about the format. Let me know if there's anything that you like, anything that you would like me to focus more on or less on. So let's get started because this has been a kind of crazy week. God of War Ragnarok is out and I'm really enjoying it. I'm like eight hours in. It plays a lot like the first game, but that's really good because that first game was absolutely phenomenal. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. As I said, I'm eight hours in and I basically stopped streaming to be able to play it more. I've been a bit under the weather, so that's also part of the reason why I'm not streaming now. But anyway, that's not all that's out because this is actually what I really want to talk about. And it is that Mick Gordon, who you might know as the dude behind the absolutely incredible soundtrack for Doom and Doom Eternal, published an insane article talking about his time working on Doom Eternal and the Doom Eternal OST. I really want to talk about this because this is absolutely mind-blowing. If you know anything about contractual work and how abusive the relationship with the clients can be, this is absolutely going to blow your mind. So if you're not aware, there was a huge controversy about the Doom Eternal soundtrack, which was announced as part of the collector's edition, but ended up releasing almost a month after the game was out. And when it released, it immediately garnered a lot of negative attention because it's basically a piece of shit. There's a lot of tracks that are very poorly edited, where the volume is just the same volume across the entire track. Every instrument is basically treated the same way. There are tempo issues where it's improperly mixed. So there's like a tempo skip or a tempo jump halfway through the song. So it's actually terrible. So a couple of weeks after that backlash, Marty Stratton, then executive producer for Doom Eternal, released a statement on Reddit out of all places, explaining how basically all of this was Mick Gordon's fault, that they gave him a contract in January 2020 to produce the soundtrack for March or April, and he basically failed at delivering the number of songs that they had contracted him for, which was 35, he only did 12 songs, that he had absolute creative control over everything. So basically saying like, this is Mick Gordon's fault. Well, now Mick Gordon, answered back two years after the fact with a post on Medium that is 14,000 words long going over the, just like the craziest thing. So let me go over this in detail. There's just a lot to talk about here. So I do recommend that you read the article. But the gist of it is Mick was hired to work on the Doom Eternal music and the soundtrack. But let's talk about the soundtrack later. That's like a separate issue, which is a huge issue. But talking about the game itself, this guy was being asked to provide music for levels that weren't designed yet. Like he couldn't see the levels and the and the guy said id Software weren't able to actually provide information on the levels because they weren't even conceptualized sometimes. So he had to make music for things that didn't exist. He was constantly denied information. His mails went unanswered. When he complained that the schedule was too tight and basically that he was running into issues because he didn't get the information he needed to be able to actually work, he was basically snubbed off the music meetings, like the meetings discussing the music of the game. The composer of the music wasn't in those meetings. As he delivered music for these levels, they couldn't be approved by its software because those levels didn't exist yet so they couldn't actually test the music that Mick Gordon had delivered, so they just didn't approve anything, which meant that he wasn't being paid. He went 11 months without pay, which is just absolutely crazy. I personally, if I had gone like two or three months without pay, I'm not working a single minute more, right? But apparently this was his only source of income at the time, so obviously he needed the money, but then they weren't paying him, so it was this really stressful situation made even more stressful by the fact that they were basically throwing him under the bus in every single situation. They rejected a ton of songs, which they later used in the game and in the marketing material. He hasn't been paid for those. He was paid for two hours of music, but they actually ended up using like five hours of music, including the rejected songs, 
So he's actually owed a lot of money from id Software and Bethesda, which he hasn't seen yet. So then we move on to the OST. The OST was announced in June 6, 2019 for a game that was releasing in November. Then the game got delayed to March 20th, 2022. And he didn't know they were going to announce an OST with his name on it, like, you know, scored by Mick Gordon ever, basically. They, they, they just announced the OST without consulting him. He didn't have a contract to work on the OST at the time. He ended up getting the contract to work on the OST March 18th, 2020. So two days before the game released and the soundtrack was supposed to be out, he was given the contract to work for one month and actually get the OST done, which is absolute insanity, of course. So once he began working on the OST, he was hired to do 12 songs. So then Marty Stratton appears again and says that 12 songs are not enough and that they are going to use more songs that were edited in-house by a guy named Chad, which are the songs that everyone recognizes to be just poorly edited because the guy apparently just copy-pasted songs on top of each other, disregarding basically any actual procedure for mixing music. So Mick Gordon was obviously angry. He then found out that they that those files, like those 35 songs, were nine months old. So id Software had been working on the OST for nine months before actually hiring Mick Gordon for the task for one month. So after the backlash from the OST basically being garbage, Marty Stratton calls Mick Gordon to blame him for the OST. They argue and then they compromise to release a joint statement, which is going to be drafted by Marty. And they agree Marty's going to send him the draft the next day, and then they will approve that and go with a joint statement. That doesn't happen because Marty Stratton goes ahead and makes the Reddit post two days later, blaming Mick Gordon. And apparently Mick Gordon has been negotiating with lawyers with Bethesda and its software to get that post removed to get his money owed back, you know, to get paid for the songs that were used that they didn't pay for. Uh, he was harassed by fans, sent death threats for ruining an OST that he didn't work on. And there's this whole like lawyer versus lawyer thing. It's really interesting. It's really fucked up. This party Stratton really sounds like a complete asshole. And honestly, like any project of his that ever comes, uh, you know, in the future, Hopefully he gets fired. Now that Microsoft has acquired Bethesda, if this is true, hopefully they kick Marty Stratton in the ass and we never hear from him again. But if this guy is involved in any game, then I will personally just not want to play that because you really have to read the article to understand the level of harassment and just complete disrespect to Mick Gordon throughout several months. The dude was overworked, overstressed and thrown under the bus in public and in corporate meetings multiple times. So it's really, really awful what happened to him. I hope he sues id Software or Bethesda or Marty Stratton or whoever for defamation and gets all the money that he owes. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, he was offered a six-figure number under the condition that the Reddit post would not be removed, which was one of his demands, and that he would never talk about this ever again, basically saying, no comment every single time that he was going to be asked about it in the future for his entire life. He decided not to take the money and actually stand up for himself. So good job, Mick Gordon. Hopefully things are looking better in the future. All right, now let's get on to some game releases. Tactics Ogre Reborn is out. If you don't know what this is, I'm a huge Final Fantasy Tactics fan. So if you enjoy Final Fantasy Tactics, you should know about this game. This is like a precursor to Final Fantasy Tactics. It was released originally in 1995 for the SNES. Then it was later worked on again or remastered again for the PSP. And now we get a full on rework where they've changed some of the systems, some of the class systems and the way the skills work and so on. They've remastered the graphics and it's looking real great. The reviews are out and they are glowing. So basically 8.5 out of 10, nines and tens all over the board. So. I highly suggest you try it out. I'm going to buy it probably like a month from now or two months from now once I finally finish God of War Ragnarok. But it's out on the Switch, on the PlayStation, Xbox, PC, everything. This is probably a great game to have on your Switch. So, you know, highly recommended. And apparently it's running great on the Switch as well at 60 FPS with absolutely no issues. 
Another piece of news is that apparently there's a Horizon MMO that's being worked on. This comes from a Korean news site. Apparently Sony is working together with Korean company and Seasoft on a Horizon MMO. Those are the creators of Guild Wars. I'm not huge into MMOs. I'm actually not into MMOs at all. So this is whatever for me. But it, it is interesting that Sony is banking so heavily on the Horizon IP because they are also releasing a VR game. And apparently they're also working on a multiplayer game, this time done by Guerrilla Games themselves. But, you know, that seems to be ways off in the future. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, don't judge me because I'm going to talk about this. But Battlefield 2042 just released an update this morning. So I figured I might as well include it talking about Season 3, which is coming real soon, November 22. So they said this will include a new map and they are reworking the maps Manifest and Breakaway, basically giving it the same treatment that they have been giving all of the other reworked maps. So, you know, actually trying to make them playable and having cover and things like that you, that you need in a shooter. But the most important thing I think is the class system is making a comeback in early 2023. So what they're gonna do is what they should have done from the start, which is they are gonna slot the specialist into the classes, so into Assault, Support, uh, Engineer, and Recon. Now, the way they're doing this is they are going to limit some of the equipment to some of the classes. They're not going to limit the weapons, so you're going to be able to use a sniper rifle, for example, as an engineer or, or as an assault, but more on that later. So, for example, the proximity sensor is only available for the Recon, the bazooka is only available for the engineer, but other pieces of equipment like Claymore Mines might be available for more classes than one. So Claymore Mines, for example, are apparently available for Recon, Assault, and Support. Now, the way they are treating primary weapons is really interesting, and I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but we'll see. They are going to add a weapon proficiency system where the different classes will have more proficiency with different weapons. So, for example, the Recon will be proficient with the sniper rifle, but not the LMGs. You can still use the LMGs, but the stats are probably not going to be as good. You're going to have more recoil. You're going to have, you know, uh, less speed at handling the weapon and whatever. Um, and I think that it's a really interesting approach. I'm not sure it's going to work. We'll see, but I don't know. At least they're trying something different. They don't want to shut down the weapon system that they have in place. And I can kind of respect that. But, you know, we'll see how it works. I don't really have faith in Battlefield 2042. I do find it interesting that they are still continuing to work on it and basically, you know, shape the game into what it actually had to be at launch. I still don't think it's going to be remembered as a good Battlefield game, even with all of this work done. I don't think it's just ever going to reach the level of a good Battlefield like Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 because... What they're starting with is an inherently bad design. All right, and last thing I want to talk about before my voice is completely gone is the AMD announcement of the 7900 XTX. So AMD announced their top tier competitor to the 4090 from NVIDIA. And the big news here is that it is 600 bucks cheaper. So the 4090 is $1,600, while this is only $1,000. That is a huge difference. And apparently the performance of each of the cards is not going to be super different. So this might actually be a really good competitor to the 4090. It also draws less power, 350 watts versus 450 from the 4090. NVIDIA still has the upper hand with things like DLSS, ray tracing and performance in overall general applications, encoding and so on. But you know, MD is working on those things. They are adding an encoding package to make rendering and streaming more feasible with an AMD card. And it is also a much smaller card. It's quite a couple of centimeters smaller than the 4090. And all of this means you can probably upgrade to the AMD 7900 XTX without needing to upgrade your power supply or your case. Because think about the amount of money that you're going to have to spend if a 4090 does not fit your case and if you need to upgrade the PSU. You're talking about $1,600, maybe $200 more for another case. 
another $100 or $150 for another PSU. I don't know the prices in the US. I'm from Chile. So, you know, I'm going off the top of my head here, but you know, you're going to spend like almost $2,000 to upgrade a graphics card versus spending only $1,000, which is still extremely expensive, especially in today's economy. But anyway, seems like AMD has a really good product on their hands. And, you know, we'll see the benchmarks and the official testing once that card is out. But apparently it's going to be a really good alternative to a extremely overpriced card, in my opinion. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this format, this new thing that I have going on. If you did, then please give it a like. My voice is about to die, so I'm just going to stop talking. Thank you for watching as always, and I hope I will catch you in the next one.